beautiful morning, July 5th, 2020, and I thought I would do a garden tour just to give an update on how things are progressing along. Starting with the roses, here is an Austrian copper rose. It doesn't have any flowers or buds at this time, but it's pushed out a lot of new growth. Recently fertilized it with some bone meal fertilizer, which is really good for roses. This here is a Coreopsis. The interesting thing about this uh, flower is was last year the petals were red. I guess this year it reverted back to its original form, which is a, I guess, a yellow flower. These grasses here is called avalanche grass. It does really well on rooftops. It has a variegated leaf if you look closely and these beautiful seed heads. Here I have uh, some thyme that I actually tried to deliberately kill, but I guess proved me wrong. It just kind of came back. I was going to use this pot for something else, but uh, noticed that growth was coming back and now it looks very refreshed and ready to harvest, actually. This here is a mugo pine, and it's one of my favorite plants because of its kind of round habitus. But they do really well on rooftops because they can take full sun. You know, pines are fairly drought resistant. Here is my newest experiment. This is an alocasia elephant leaf, elephant ears rather, uh, and as you can see it's got its name by its shape and its large size. And I bought these as bulbs and I planted them intermixed with this Irish moss that's currently flowering and cascading over this pot, but didn't think it was going to do anything and it just waited, waited, and then finally two weeks ago, started sprouting out these little shoots like that through the soil. And in just a few days, they started unfurling. They've been growing really well since. And I'm deliberately keeping them in the shade of this service berry so that it doesn't get uh, beat up by the sun and the wind. So I think it's in a pretty happy location right now. And this here is a uh, lime green smoke bush, and color is just really striking. This chartreuse pop of green in a relatively uh, shaded corner. Here we have a mixed bed of different plants, herbaceous plants. This is called Gaura, and it's uh, otherwise known as wind, or sometimes people call them wand flowers. And they're really an ideal flower for rooftops because the flowers are very small and the leaf structure is very small as well. So it doesn't, the wind doesn't catch it and it can kind of move almost like a grass without getting damaged too much. It looks really nice with the underplanting of this catmint, which is quite fragrant and just kind of gives it a prairie feel. And this is the first year that I'm growing lamb's ears. It's always been one of my favorite plants and I, I always love them in containers because of the way that they spill over. As you can see, these couple of lamb's ears are doing really well. Their leaves are huge and very soft. This is a bed of sedum. Another plant that is impossible to kill. I never water it, I just let nature do its thing and it just knits together and forms this beautiful tapestry, almost like a Persian rug with all the colors. This is also one of the original plants that we introduced up in this bed here. This is a variegated iris it actually finished flowering. It has this light purple, kind of a bearded iris flower. This is a purple smoke bush, which is uh, complementing the lime green version over there. 
also has very beautiful colors and it gets its name from these flower heads that the mature specimens will put out these plumes uh, of these little seed heads or flower heads and it looks like a cloud of smoke when you step back. I almost killed the two smoke bushes last year because I bought this synthetic fertilizer that unfortunately scorched the leaves. Um, you know, it was too much nutrition almost and it, it burned the leaves and the leaves actually puckered and they turned yellow and brown and it was very sad. But this year I decided no uh, fertilizer unless it's organic fertilizer and just a little bit. They've actually resisted me trying to kill them. I get a lot of questions about these plants here. It's actually two separate creeping hydrangeas and they've got these fun rounded leaves that look like little silver dollars almost and it has a climbing habitus. You can see it's trying to climb over this wall over here. Here I kind of keep the random plants, kind of the ones that uh, don't otherwise have a home. They're like the orphans. This is a nasturtium that I grew from seed and the leaves are these tiny little quarter-sized leaves but um, it's flowering so it's doing pretty well. This is a mint that was abused by some geese that actually decided to nest up here this year and it was chopped down to almost the ground and it still managed to come back. So we'll see if we can get a harvest uh, with the mint this year. And back here is a uh, Hokonoa grass. Hokonoa grass is a sort of a forest grass from Japan. I purposely put it under this Japanese maple so that it's shaded, it likes a dappled shade but also it uh, contrasts with the dark colors of this glorious Japanese maple, which is one of my favorite plants in the world. This tree is actually an orangeola variety. It's a weeping variety that stays kind of small. In the height of noon, these leaves do provide some dappled shade for this maple and it kind of protects it from scorching in the sun. So you'll notice that most of the tree, even the ones that are exposed directly to the sun, are actually free of any burn marks. So it's actually quite happy. Fun story about this willow. It was a Home Depot find. I got this for $14.99 because it had fallen over in the parking lot and nobody else wanted to buy it. Yeah, it's been doing really well and doing its job and I noticed that the birds love kind of hanging out in this tree. This is a rosemary that I've had for a while and I think I've been over watering. And this is oregano and it's uh, also kind of this interesting variegated variety. So in addition to having flavor and scent, it's got a, a beautiful leaf as well as a bonus. And I keep the oregano in a separate pot together with the rosemary because of the similar soil that they enjoy. And in this zinc bathtub, the rest of this is more of like a rich compost type of potting mix here because the basil, the nasturtium, and the peppers have more of a similar soil structure that they like. These are my shishito peppers. I've got some shishitos over here. I have uh, the long red slim peppers here and some uh, Thai hot peppers here, which you can see starting to fruit here, but unfortunately didn't anticipate the basil growing so fast and shading out the peppers, which ideally should get more sun. This plant here that some people mistake for lemongrass, but it's actually an iris with dark purple flowers and it's really stunning when the flowers do grow. So this is kind of the opposite of the other iris. 
that we grow for its leaves. These are my David Austin roses. So we have this yellow variety, which is called Crown Princess Margarita. And this variety, which is kind of like a crimson red David Austin rose, and this one's called a Munstead Wood. These are some hostas that were super tiny when we got them, progressively gotten larger and larger. And they're really happy under this other service berry that we have. And this guy is actually an elderberry. Um, it kind of looks like a Japanese maple or weeping variety, but it's actually a uh, herbaceous plant that will lose all its leaves and it, it goes down to this clump in the winter. And down here we have a couple of other varieties of hostas as well. It's a very diverse family. This guy is happy because he's actually flowering, which is really cool. This here, these little cute ground cover plants are called baby's tears. And eventually they will knit together. It will actually look somewhat like moss. Uh, from far away you can barely make out the tiny little leaves and, and so it has this kind of uh, mossy type appearance. Right.